one. So what is it, day 31 or 32 today, Jared? Uh, today is day 32. I'm always off a day. Why is that? Well, because I think I see you post one, and then I think... Oh, I see that one, Today's day 31, Sunday. and then that just hits in my head, because when we post them on YouTube, they're kind of like a day behind by the time we get them up, so that, I don't know, what words. Hey, you guys, subscribe to our YouTube. Our YouTube is Jedi Rich Creative Producer. We're trying to get a thousand subscribers, because, uh, well, that's when you can start making money. You can't even make money until you have a thousand subscribers, but for us, the biggest thing we want is to be able to live stream. Because, you know, the thing with YouTube is you can't make money on the ones that you put music on. So that's most of our videos. <laughs> most of our videos we put music, so uh, I don't know how much money we would really ever make on YouTube. But we want to be able to live stream, and then I think there's a couple more things you get with 1,000 subscribers. It's kind of like then you're, you move up a little bit there with um, YouTube. You're, like, established, you know, once you have your 1,000 subscribers. So we're really close. We're, like, 980-something. So if you guys could jump over there and just subscribe, that would be really, really helpful. Um, also, you can check us out on JaiRich.com all the time. That's our personal website. We don't – there's no – spamming that occurs over there we just post things it's kind of like just our daily blogs in a sense we have like in our life up there everything is up there tons of photos stories all kinds of videos and fun stuff so yesterday uh tiesto if y'all know it's the uh, dj tiesto here he uh you know had a residency here in vegas i don't know what's going on with all these residencies now how that's gonna work out i don't know i'm sure most of them have canceled now um but he did a live stream from Denver yesterday where he lives. And we uh, then played it here and danced. And we had a blast. I don't know if you guys watched that on the Periscope. And then we put that up to the YouTube. So go check that out. That was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. We had a blast. And, you know, there's a lot of fun things that you can do during this whole staying at home. But guess what? So... Finally, 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 people are agreeing with me about the virus. So I'm like, thank you, because guess who's agreeing with me? President Donald Trump is agreeing with me. He is telling, he's already said to liberate the states of Virginia, um, Michigan, and um, uh, what was the third one? Uh, 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 Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota. Uh, because he said, defy your governor's orders of, like, the governors are being really extreme, these Democratic governors, like I've been saying, just like Sislek over here, just like our governor. So I'm like, let's defy Governor Sislek's orders. Man, that's the next one. But the Trump is, the Trump, I always call him that, Trump is telling, oh, yeah, the Trump. I always call him the Trump, the Trump is telling People to defy their governors. Or so, you guys, this is like civil war happening here. We got the president telling us to defy our state governor's orders. So this, everything is falling apart in our government. If you guys have not realized this yet, you got to wake up. Can you believe this? So, like I said, this was a political stunt. I've been saying that all along. You all thought I was crazy. And I've been saying it time and time again. Now we got, I got the president back me up. Dr. Phil, <laughs> Dr. Phil came out yesterday and everyone was all mad. He, he agrees with me saying the same thing. This is a regular flu virus that got blown out of proportion for political stuff. And it's the Democrats, like I've been telling you guys, just like little sissy Sisolak over here, Democratic governor, put all these restrictions on Nevada because he's a little crony. And then he's also a Catholic. So he also put the restrictions because he was asking for advice from the bishops. He met with 20 bishops and asked them, what do you think I should do? Should I open Sin City or keep it closed? What do you think the Catholic Church would want? I mean, come on. I mean, shh, 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 Louise. My God. Shh, jeez. This is ridiculous. So... I feel very happy, though, because if you all thought I was crazy, I sure was not. I, unless you think, you might think the president's crazy. Yeah, a lot of people do that. But, I mean, right now he's saying to fight the governors. So that, because the governors are lying to us all, that's pretty big. That's pretty 
freaking huge things going on right now, you guys. It's like civil war. We, we got the president. We already have a lot of states in defiance with the federal government because of the marijuana, which I agree with that. I'm all for the marijuana. We smoke weed every day. So good on you all for that. But now we got the governors pushing it too much where they're putting all these restrictions on people and people are losing their jobs and people this. Oh, what um, what Dr. Phil said was right now already we are starting to hit the point where they are people are dying because of poverty things more than the virus like poverty kills people in ways you know I, you know things like not having the money for things but um more people and I, i'm sure get in accidents as they get stressed as i don't know the poverty that i don't understand he said this i uh, you guys can look it up but what he said is there comes a point where um when you mess up society like this people now are being affected even through uh dying more because of poverty because where the poverty level is rising of people that didn't used to be uh in the poverty level because now this is insane so like i already said not only are we financially affected more than anything you know but now literally he says people are dying because of po thing a death that occurred due to poverty which i don't know all of those deaths but um i i watched his thing yesterday i was like oh my gosh it's what i've been saying so you guys, if you still are thinking this is a deadly virus, you really got to wake up and take off your face mask. It must be cutting off your oxygen. Take off the face mask because you got to wake up. The president of the United States is saying this is ridiculous and y'all are still wearing your face mask and the pigeons are getting caught in them, which makes me infuriated. I think that pigeon died. She couldn't get herself loose and she she tortured herself all day it was the worst thing i ever seen because she was picking at herself all day it drove her insane it was stu stuck to her oh it was all we try to help her is she oh it makes me so upset just because people wearing these nonsense face masks for a virus that was a regular flu virus do you wear a face mask every year when the flu comes around if you do, then continue to wear a face mask. Maybe you were someone that needed to because you're very unhealthy, like you have an immune deficiency. But if you put it on because of this coronavirus, then take that shit off now. You look like a buffoon wearing it. You look like someone that is not aware of reality. If you're wearing that mask, if you're going on this whole thing, you guys, you got to wake up. And we need to all... Get back on the train of that. This was a political move that they messed up our society. We should be mad at our leaders right now. You should be very mad at the leaders. All of them. But especially the Democrats right now. And in the past, I probably would have sided with the Democrats more because I'm in a sense more a liberal person I'm about abortions and uh, freedom of things and um, I uh, am not uh, about like so much religion and Christianity and that seems to be more the Republican Party is very Christian based I, my parents were Republican when I was growing up and they were Christian but now when I see the way the Democrats are going I'm like this is unbelievable and like I've told you in the past, I don't vote. So um, if anything, I would say don't vote. Because I think every time you vote, you encourage this terrible system we have of just fraud and greed and just, I mean, you don't really have any say. They're all, they all cheat. They all lie. And it's the same group of people. They're all friends. They all know each other. I mean, Trump was going to the same events as the Clintons, you know. It's, all, it's, it's the same group of billionaires that we get to vote. Which billionaire do you want to be in charge this time? And you know what stupid crap they want to set up for all their friends. That's what you're voting for. It's not like you actually could vote for like someone that you wanted. Like it's not like you could nominate a person and that person could become president. Yeah, right. You got to be a billionaire these days to become a president. At least a millionaire. Um so that's not actually democracy. So and now, as you see, we're turning into a little bit of communism because they're having to, <laughs> or socialism, they're having to provide for y'all because they took everything away. Now the government's going to have to give money. I heard they're yeah, approving more money for people, which is good. 
They should. They should be giving a fortune for what they've done. So, you all need to wake up if you still think there's a deadly virus. For one thing, there was always a virus. Yes, there was a virus, a regular flu virus, that the regular number of people died from that every year die from the flu virus. If anything, this one was less. Less people. The numbers are coming out. They wanted the numbers to be more. They were even stretching the numbers by doing things like if you had, had caught the virus during this time and you died from any other death, like let's say you got the virus, but then you got better and then you got in an automobile accident, they would say, oh, they had the virus and they died. So they were counting those deaths. Like, so they could, because that is true, they had the virus and they died, right? But they didn't die from the virus. So they were counting those. So they wanted the numbers to be higher because this was a political stunt. There was a virus, yes. The virus is not a lie. The severity of the virus is the lie. Do you see the difference? You can have a virus. You can have a regular flu virus like we have every year. But they jumped on this, on the bandwagon, on this propaganda, on these lies that it was so deadly and that you need to stay indoors and all this nonsense because they were trying to take down Trump. And you, if you think that's not true, well, it's coming out now from more people than just me. But also, just remember, they just tried to impeach the president not too long ago, like a couple months ago right before this and it didn't work so our uh the democrats are taking any means to try to get trump out of office and the reason the biggest reason is because that uh one of those judges is going to die during the next president's term for sure and probably that um what's her name ginsburg i think she so they do not want a Republican to appoint the next Supreme Court judge because right now the Republicans own our own yeah own run the majority of Congress and if they get the Supreme Court as well then the Dems are going to be really screwed so they want the next president to be a Democrat and they are going to take any means necessary and they have by sabotaging our whole economy with this virus uh, propaganda, is what we should call this. This was like during, uh, you know, the in the Nazism with the propaganda. That's what they were doing there, you know. It was all propaganda. The government was lying to the people, had them believing things that weren't true, had them fearing other people. Like they were fearing the Jewish people. They thought something, you know, was wrong with them just because their government was saying this. Now you can... You can still, this is the same thing happening, it's just instead we did a virus. We said there was a deadly virus instead of, a, at a group of people, we said this deadly virus is going to come kill everyone and just created all this fear. But it's the same thing, it's still propaganda. You see, it's still propaganda from your government. They can take it any way they want, and you got to be careful of that. And you think, oh, our government is not like the Nazi, they're not like Hitler. Oh, really? Oh, really? Look at what they just did. And even Trump is saying that's exactly what they did. And even Dr. Phil is saying that. And, you know, several other people, I'm sure, those are just the ones that popped up on the, like, those were, like, the top news I saw today on Twitter. You know, for the ones that are, like, the most trending, I saw Dr. Phil and Trump. Sure, there's many other people speaking out. I felt like I was the only one for a minute because everyone was calling me crazy. But uh, you, you need to wake up if you are living in the illusion that uh, your government always has your best interests, that's, throw that out the window because it's not the case. Here's the thing, for one thing, they can't have the best interests of every person because every person's interest is like, <laughs> let, me, let me put it this way. One person's interest could actually be the opposite of like the other person's. So you can't please everyone. Does that make sense? Like one person might want this one thing and need this one thing, but the other person needs the exact opposite thing to occur so you can never please everyone. So they can't have everyone's best interest ever. It's just not possible. Like, okay, let, uh, here I'll like, give an example of actually a thing. Some people all want to where you can't have abortion. Like, the Republicans want that. They want no abortions, right? And the Democrats and me, I'm not Democrat or Republican, but I say, you're allowed to have abortions. I had one. And I think a, a woman has a right to choose that. Now, the government can't please both of those things. 
they try to find something in the middle. And then that's why people are mad. Take down, all this nonsense. Lunatics. People go and burn down places. It's like, oh, so you're getting at people saying that they can't, uh, you know, have an abortion. But then you're going to go burn down these buildings and kill people on the inside. That really makes a lot of sense. They'll say, you're killing a baby, and then they kill people because they're killing babies. The logic of people. Or they say, kill someone that killed. Because they get that shit from the Bible. Or is it eye for an eye? But there's also another thing in the Bible that says, turn the other cheek. And take the... And don't forget to... Uh, you know, while you're noticing the speck in someone else's eye, don't forget the boulder in your own. Take the boulder out of your own eye before you remove the speck from someone else's. Yeah, people forget about those ones. They want to go eye for an eye. That's a good one. Good one. People like to take things and just make it work for them. The Bible's a good one. They find and pick, and, pick and the ones that sound good to them. You can really twist the words to make it be whatever you want. And you can... Uh, point out the ones, like the one that the people go for why they think that you shouldn't be gay is, there's a verse that says, man should lie with another man. It's the only thing it says. And it's like, for one thing, people don't understand. You lose the Bible. Okay, I'll tell you about the Bible, for example. So, if you believe everything in the Bible is true, okay, let's just say, we're just going to say that. Whether you do or not, it don't matter. I personally... I'll tell you, there is things that occurred that might be true, but I'm going to tell you not everything in the Bible is true, and I'll tell you why. Okay. The things that occurred in the Bible occurred a long time ago. A long, long time ago, right? Thousands of years ago. The events that people are talking about, these events, that, oh, all these crazy things that occurred, right? The beginning of the earth, the whatever, Noah's Ark, whatever story you want to grab onto, right? Well, even... If those things occurred exactly as they're saying, the chances of it being exactly the way they said are so rare because here's the thing, those stories were passed down for generation to generation to generation to generation before they were written down for a long time. Like a long time before they were written down. So have you ever played that telephone game? in school where you know you tell a story and then you try and figure out what it is at the end after everyone told it well that's what happened with most of these religious things so even if an event occurred by the time it was written down you know they got what they could from what they thought the original person or thing or event had been and then now also we've translated all of the books at this point so then they had the original whatever the book was scripts or whatever they wrote it on stone whatever you believe the mormons a guy I don't know, the gold plates or something. Um, now they had to translate it, and there's all these different versions. So if you ever take the words word for word, that's absolutely ridiculous because it's been translated a million different times. It was told, passed down before it was ever even written. So you need to take the general concept, never the word for word. So when it's like, a man should not lie with another man. Who the heck knows what context they were talking about or if it was anything that came down to now. So when people use that for not being gay or whatever, you're like, what? <sighs> Absolutely ridiculous. But what's interesting is, it's funny, I think the Catholic Church and stuff are starting to realize that you can't, you can't out people uh, for their sexuality like that. So they are now, I think, allowing that in the Catholic Church. So they're like changing it, because yeah, it was it was ridiculous. So if you're still believing things from a book that was written down so many years ago, and like I said, was retranslated and um, was not even the original words of what someone said, because it was passed down for y hundreds of years. I think it was like hundreds of years before it was like even actually written down. Quite a quite a few years. Um, and people want to hold on to these, like, words. And that's where you're always going to 
mess up when you just focus on words. I hate when people say, oh, you said that wrong. I'm like, I say lots of things wrong because it's not about the words. It's the meaning. And so, yes, I might get some facts wrong. So I might say the wrong numbers. I might have the wrong date. I often have the wrong month and year in when I say how many years because time is so, it just, I don't really care about I care about time in the sense of I'm very punctual. I'll be on time. But I don't care about time and, like, how long that was or how long till this. I was like, whatever. It's so relative to me. Um, but here's the thing. I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> See, that's what happens. Because you just never know. Like, they can't. I don't ever want to focus on too far ahead. You got to just be in the moment. And I am still in the moment because I completely forgot what I was just talking about like five seconds ago. But um, anyways, I'll, yeah, I'll come back to it. But yeah, <coughs> excuse me, voice is cracking this morning. So yesterday that was so fun with the dancing, but I got so tired. So we did that Tiesto thing. But yeah, okay, so about the Bible. And you can't hold on to words because words will always just the words just cause fights me and Jared rich used to get in the biggest fights over like you said this i'm like yeah but what did i mean did you think i meant that i was mad well you said it yeah but like do you really think i mean that like because I mean, we'll say really mean things you know i've we've threatened all kinds of things to each other of you know divorce this and that i tell them i hate him all the time when we're mad you know but i don't but some people won't ever say mean words oh we've cut I used, I used to not like the word cunt until Jerry Rich just called me that 24-7. So I was like, all right, I'll just get used to that. And those are the words we use when we're angry because it doesn't matter. We get ourselves out, the, all the feelings out, and then we're like over it. And then we feel better. People are like, oh, I would never call my wife a cunt or a bitch. Oh, my God. Maybe that's why you guys are not happy. Because if you express yourself and the words don't matter. They really don't. It's the meaning behind them. So if you know someone loves you, it doesn't matter if they called you a cunt or a dick or an asshole or a bitch or whatever, a foul word. That's why I used to never cuss. I grew up, you don't cuss, right? I grew up. Now I use them because they are, they're stupid. Who cares? They don't mean anything, but they're so impactful to some people that I don't cuss very often. Um, when I, I do, if I do it, I'm doing it on purpose. It doesn't come out of like, um, I, I, it's not... Um, some people can't control when they cuss because they, they, mine is not. When I do it, I do it because I think it's funny a lot of times because people are so appalled. The biggest one I like to say is, God damn it, because that would... Because <gasps> I, I grew up thinking that if you said that, you would go to hell. I thought if you said that word, that one word, that would be it. Blasphemy. The one thing you can't be forgiven from. Are you kidding me from a word? I'm saying a word. That we, oh, okay, what about if it's in a different language? Does that count? I mean, is it, is it just God damn it? Or, what if, you know, what's the translation for God damn it in another language? I mean, come on, it's a word. Get out of here. This is like people in their, in their words. So try not to worry about words. Think of the meaning that comes right now. That, that can be taken the other way. When someone's saying something nice and they're actually meaning nasty things, you should notice that too. And then, like, oh, well, I did was say something nice. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't think I could read through that BS? Of, oh, yeah, I saw the meaning behind that nasty comment that sounded, oh, what did I say? Oh, oh, I was complimenting. Oh, really? So that can happen, too. So it's the meaning and behind it, and you'll know. And people want to focus on words when they want to be dramatic. Oh, you said this. Oh. Um, and, you know, some words can hurt, of course, you know, but that would be because of the meaning behind them. If someone was really nasty and said something really nasty, that would hurt. But if it's someone you loved and they were mad and they said something nasty and you knew they were just mad and you were mad too, get over it, you know, move on. Um, but, yeah, that, I think that's a, one of the biggest things with a lot of people who struggle with relationships is they don't communicate, like, when they're mad. Oh, I'm not upset. Oh, really? You're not upset? Oh, you were just talking and then you get quiet? You're not upset? No, no, I'm not upset. You didn't make me... No, no. Oh, really? Now, oh, I just don't feel like talking now. <laughs> That's what most people do. 
and then they just do that all the time. My, my mom and stepdad, uh, you know, my mom killed herself when I was 20, but when I was younger, she, her my stepdad fought a lot. And they would do this thing where they wouldn't talk for like a week to each other. Well, they'd only talk through me. They'd play a silent game. I was like, oh, jeez, this is ridiculous. They just would not talk. They would just do the minimal if they had to, you know, if they absolutely had to, but any more than that. So at the table, they'd just, like, everyone would be sitting silent, like, this is ridiculous. And there's families that do that. And I would imagine that's occurring right now because people are getting very irritated with each other. I'm sure it's come to some people who are just silent now. They forget it. They were fighting maybe in the beginning. Are they enjoying themselves, then fighting, now silence? So remember, it's better to fight than to be silent because at least fighting, you're expressing yourself and you're living. Silence is being numb and dead to your feelings. It's being depressed. So silence is never the better option. It'll seem like it because no one wants to fight. They're always scared to fight. But fighting is a really good thing. For one thing, fighting uh, uh, anger is an energy. So if you are feeling very tired and depressed, it's probably because you are repressing your anger, which is an energy. And so if you, you'll be amazed if you thought you were tired and if you get mad, whoa, you get some energy, don't you? So what will happen with me sometimes, I'll be, you know, feeling like, oh, I don't know if I, I want to talk, but I don't know if I can, you know, get out there. And then Jerry will tell me something. And I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. I can't get me on the scope. I, I got I to gotta say about this. And that's when I come in all um, mad. So, oh, I was all fired up. So, so locally we've... <laughs> We have some like love hate relationships here, where we, uh, uh, with a lot of the um, you know the journalists and the news anchors and things. So we've had some of them we've met personally, uh, you know, at, at certain things, and then some of them um, you know have hearted things in the past, and then some of them we've gone at pretty hard for things, so they don't particularly like us. And um, one of them is uh, uh, Mick Anchors. He is uh, a journalist for the Review Journal, and. Um, so today, though, but, like, but we love all these people at the end of the day. Like, we love all the Vegas people. We give them shit, but we love them. And I can't stand some of these guys with the, with the Raiders Stadium, these guys that are working on it, the, uh, like the union leader, the one guy, Tommy White. He's the head of the union, this buffoon. So he's going at Mick Ackers, calling him a dipshit. And I'm like, oh, no, are you kidding me? I mean, and then I'm like, no, 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 you can't be doing that. These guys are so out of line, these these. This raider, um, I don't know where these guys came from, but... Like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a roly or sinker. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out.